<coughs> Disclaimer. The information provided to you in this video course is for educational work only. It teaches you how to work with Linux and some security tools from the information technology. The author is not responsible for the way you use this information. The information provided to you has an educational objective to impart knowledge to everybody who is interested in Linux. Persons who want to use the shown knowledge to harm other people are unwanted and it is forbidden to them to watch this video course. At first I want to give you a short overview about this course. We start with the basics of Linux and then we will learn how to use files and directories. After we are able to handle the Linux basic commands it is time to go deeper into the system and network areas of Linux. Then you will learn how to use the shell and shell scripts. After that we will take a look at the toolkits of Backtrack 5 and also on the configuration files of the Linux system. Last of all we will take a look at demons and how they work. I hope you will enjoy this video course and learn something useful. Welcome to part 6 of this video course. If you watch the other 5 parts, then you know now a lot of useful stuff about Linux. In this part, we will take a short look at the most common configuration files of the Linux system. I will give you only a short overview. There are a lot of more configuration files but because of the time factor we will not care about them. Good. Take a look at this overview. It shows you some common configuration files that you will find on nearly every Linux system. Let's begin with the configuration file for the boot process in the file slash etc slash grub.conf are all parameters placed which are important for the boot process of the Linux machine. It contains information to the boot manager and also to hard disks and partitions that should be mounted while the boot process. Like every configuration file you can edit this file with an editor like Vim, VI, Emacs, or Nano. I tell you that the most configuration files can only be edited by root or with the super user, do, command, the sudo command. But this just by the way. The next configuration file, slash, etc, slash, init tab, specifies the ROM level that the machine should boot into. On Linux you have normally six ROM levels. If the Linux machine is in the ROM level zero, the system is halted. The ROM level one is the single user mode. The ROM level two is the local multi-user mode without remote network. The ROM level three is full multi-user mode with network. The ROM level four is not used. The ROM level five is full multi-user mode with network and X desktop manager. In the run level 6 the Linux machine will reboot, if you want to try something very funny. Then you tell your init tab configuration file, that the default run level is 6, in this case your Linux machine will reboot, and reboot, and reboot, and so on. Ok, I told you what will happen if you choose run level 6 as default run level, and if you are smart enough you do not try this otherwise you will waste your Linux system. Good. The next configuration file is slash etc slash profile. In this file are the system-wide environment variables for all users. There also exists a dot profile configuration file in every home folder of an user. That file stores the environment variables of the current user to whom this dot profile config file belongs. Good. In the configuration file, slash, etc, slash, group, are all information about the groups on the system stored. Good. In the configuration file, slash, etc, slash, g, shadow, are the encrypted passwords stored. There are also the information stored if, and, when a password does expire. Good. The next configuration file is slash etc slash p 
Pass WD contains the information about all users who have access to the Linux system. Good. In the configuration file, slash, etc, slash, shadow, are the encrypted passwords stored. There are also the information stored if, and, when the password does expire. Good. The next configuration file tells the system, which user can use the super user command, the file, slash, etc, slash, sudoers, contains all information to that topic. Good. The configuration file, slash, etc, slash, fs tab, contains a list of devices and their associated mount points. Edit this file, to add, cd-roms, partitions, and, floppy drives, at startup to your system. There is also the, slash, etc, slash, mtap, configuration file, this file works exactly like the fs tap, configuration file, but the difference is, that it tells you which devices are at the moment mounted to your systems, every time you mount a new device, or dismount a device, the configuration file, mtap will change its content. Good. The configuration file, slash, etc, slash, rc, dot, d, slash, rc, dot, local, is a bash script, that is executed at the end of the login process. It is similar to the autoaccept dot bat in, dos. Okay. Very good. All configuration files of the cron process, are placed under, slash, etc, there are four directories, that automatically execute all scripts within the directory at intervals of hour, day, week, or month. Good. A list of all known host names and IP addresses on the machine is placed in the file, slash, etc, slash, hosts. The configuration file, host name, in the, etc, directory, contains the full host name including the domain. The last configuration file you see on the screen, is the, resolve.conf, file, in that file you find, definitions to, IP addresses, of DNS servers. Very good. Now I teach you what are the most common configuration files on the Linux system, of course there are many more configuration files, there are also files, that are not stored in the, etc, directory, but instead of that, for example in some subfolders of the, USR, directory, or maybe somewhere else, depending on the application that uses them. Normally a configuration file, ends with, dot, conf. I hope you have learned now a lot of more useful stuff about Linux. And next we will see an example on the shell. Let's open the terminal window now. We will search for all files that ends by, dot, conf, so type now into your shell the command, find, space, slash, for the root directory, space, minus name, space, star wildcard, dot, conf, and then followed by the option minus, print, to watch the output on the screen. This is fantastic, do you see how many configuration files, exist on this Backtrack 5 Linux machine. Let's watch it a little while, and take a look at the ending of the files, every file ends with, dot, conf, and in the most cases that is a configuration file. In the next example, we will edit the configuration file, slash, etc, slash, hosts, in this file you could link a hostname to an IP address. Let's see an example, I have the OpenSUSE Linux 11, machine running at the moment. The host name of the machine is OpenSUSE, let's pin OpenSUSE, so type into the terminal window, pin, space, OpenSUSE, and then hit enter, do you see the output? 
Maybe this takes a while, but then you will see that the host is unknown. We will change this by editing the file hosts in the etc directory. So let's go. We type on the prompt vi space slash etc slash hosts and then we hit enter. Now we are in the vi editor. You see that the IP address 127.0.0.1 is linked to the name localhost, and there is also another entry that links another IP address to the name BT. For the moment just ignore the IP version 6 entries. We want to place an entry for the OpenSUSE Linux host here. Type the key combination L plus I to get to the insert modus of the VI. Editor, now scroll down, and place a new line in this configuration file, type now the IP address of the host you want to add, followed by its host name. In our case we type now, 192.168.56.102, then we press the tab key, and type in the host name OpenSUSE, now we after we have finished our work, we hit the escape key on our keyboard to tell VI that we are ready with our work and want to leave the insert modus. In the next step we type in colon followed by the option W and Q and hit enter. The W stands for write and the Q letter for quit. Now we will ping the open C host once again and you will see now the difference. The IP address that we link to this Linux host is now shown on the prompt. We get an answer that the host is up as ping request. Cool stuff. Now hit Ctrl plus E to stop the output. In this way it is possible to link an IP address to a hostname. I showed you just one example what you can do with configuration files. But there are hundreds of examples. If you do not know how to edit a configuration file, just type man, followed by the configuration file name. In some cases there exists a man page for that configuration file, mostly if it is a well-known configuration file, with man, space, hosts, you get the man page for the file we have edited just a few minutes ago. Great stuff. Ok, in this part of the video course, you have learned some things about the basic and most common configuration files in Linux. In the next and last part of this video course we will take a short look at demons and how they work. I say thank you for watching and hope that you have learned something useful. Love the beat, control you.